Do you live in an area prone to hurricanes or tropical cyclones? Has a hurricane or tropical storm warning been issued for your area? If so, you need to be alert for possible rapid intensification of the storm heading towards you. In fact, even if you live far inland from where the storm is predicted to make landfall, you need to keep an eye out for rapid intensification of the approaching tropical storm or category one or two hurricane. I'll explain why in this video. In recent years, because of the effects of climate change, the chances that a tropical storm or relatively weak category one or two hurricane will intensify in a very short amount of time into a much more dangerous category four or category five hurricane have increased substantially. So you may not have much time in which to evacuate or to prepare for the storm making landfall. It's essential that you stay alert to updated forecasts so that you can take appropriate actions to protect life and property. Recently, rapid intensification drove Hurricane Otis from a run-of-the-mill tropical storm into a deadly Category 5 hurricane in less than 24 hours. I'll have more to say about that later. The driving force behind this rapid intensification is the increase in global surface temperatures in recent years. As this chart from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer shows, global average surface temperatures have increased significantly in the past decade or so. Because the oceans comprise approximately 70% of the Earth's surface, a substantial amount of the heat or thermal energy associated with climate change induced warming is taken up by the world's oceans. This is readily apparent in this chart, also from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer, that shows a substantial increase in sea surface temperatures in the past decade. Not only has the surface of the world's oceans warmed because of climate change, but also the upper reaches of the world's oceans have taken up a substantial fraction of the excess heat from climate change. However, there remain large variations in ocean temperatures from one location to another, owing to wind patterns, currents, and weather conditions. As developing storms move into warm ocean regions, they draw in thermal energy from the water vapor evaporating from the warm ocean surface. The increased energy increases the wind speeds of the storm. Those higher wind speeds cause higher storm surges when the hurricane makes landfall. Along with the increased winds, the storm draws in more and more water vapor leading to heavy rainfall which can continue along the track of the storm long after the winds have died down. This can lead to severe flooding at great distances from the initial landfall. Climate scientists generally consider a tropical storm or hurricane to be rapidly intensifying if its average wind speed increases by at least 35 miles per hour in a 24 hour period. That usually would be enough of a wind speed increase to push the storm up two categories within the 24 hour period. For example, if a relatively weak category one hurricane with wind speeds in the 85 mile per hour range undergoes the minimum rapid intensification, it would end up making landfall as a much stronger category three storm dangerous but not catastrophic. But occasionally, hurricanes rapidly intensify by much more than the minimum. When that happens, the hurricane can make landfall as a catastrophic Category 4 or Category 5 storm. If the rapid intensification happens several days before the storm makes landfall, there still is time to prepare. Structures can be boarded up and residents can evacuate to safer locations 
in ample time. However, if rapid intensification happens within 24 hours of landfall, evacuation may not be possible. This chart is from a recent paper in the journal Nature Scientific Reports by Andra Garner of Rowan University in New Jersey. Professor Garner looked at how rapidly hurricane winds increased during a 24-hour period for essentially all the hurricanes that occurred along the Atlantic coast of the United States between 1971 and 2020. This is a period during which excellent wind speed data was available for all Atlantic coast hurricanes. Professor Garner separated the results into three groups. The historical period, which ran from 1971 to 1990, which is shown by the blue line. The modern era from 2001 to 2020, shown by the orange line and an intermediate era between 1986 and 2005 that overlapped both the historical period and the modern era shown by the green line. The vertical lines in the chart show the mean amount of 24-hour intensification for all three eras. Because there were different numbers of hurricanes in the three periods, Professor Garner reported the results as probability density curves that are normalized to have a total area equal to one under each of the curves. This was an excellent way to show how the 24-hour wind speed intensification patterns changed over time. The results show quite clearly that hurricanes are intensifying more rapidly now than in the historical era, and this can be attributed to the warming of the oceans caused by climate change. Recall that at least a 30 knot or 35 mile per hour increase in 24 hours is needed to have a rapid intensification event. Comparing the orange curve with the blue curve, we see that there is a significantly higher probability for rapid intensification events to occur now in the modern era than during the historical era, including events with wind speed increases of 70 knots or more in a 24-hour period, which would be sufficient to move a tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane into a catastrophic Category 4 or greater hurricane. As we know, the city of Acapulco on the west coast of Mexico was devastated with little advance warning by Hurricane Otis. Otis found the warm water it needed to rapidly intensify from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane near the coast in the 24-hour period just before it made landfall. So there was little time for the populace to prepare for such an intense storm. In the 24-hour period, just before making landfall, Otis wind speeds increased by about 115 miles per hour, or 100 knots. This was sufficient to push Otis from the tropical storm category into a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane of historic proportions. The damaging effects of Otis were made worse by the topography of the area. The shape of Acapulco Bay worked to increase storm surge and the mountains ringing the city tended to focus the wind energy carried by the storm as well as channeling much of the rainfall from the storm into the city leading to both wind damage and flood damage. Needless to say, it will take a long time for Acapulco to fully recover from Hurricane Otis. I hope you have found this discussion of rapid intensification of tropical storms and hurricanes informative. If you have any questions, 
please post them in the comments section of the video and I will do my best to provide answers. Also, if you are not yet a subscriber to my channel, I would appreciate it greatly if you would hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.